Now, bond issuance between interest dates. Some questions, they're gonna have us see uh, an issue date that's different from the interest payment date. So that's what I was talking about where your interest expense is gonna keep going up and up. Accrued interest gets paid, you know, goes up and it gets paid down, goes up and gets paid down. So for these, we account for the interest not paid, but accrued as accrued interest. So just like on your credit card, right? You've got an increasing amount of accrued, um, you know, accru I mean, it doesn't have the interest, but accrued, uh, you know, purchases, right? Accrued costs. This is an interesting situation where if the interest has been accrued before the issuance date, the buyers will pay the seller interest accrued from the last interest payment date to the date of issue. Basically, what that's saying is very rarely, but in some of these questions, we will see, okay, the bond was issued on this date, but interest actually started accruing before the bond was even issued. Now, you might say that's weird. Why is that? My straight answer for you is don't worry about it. It just is like that in some of our questions here on the test. And the interest will just basically be accruing before you even issue the, the bond itself. So bond issuance between interest states. Let's see that here. Well, on March 1st, year five, Stark Inc. issues. So we've got same information, right? 10-year bonds, same dates, right? 1.5 million. These bonds have an annual interest rate of 6%, payable semi-annually on, on January 1st and July 1st. What do we record? Well, we're dealing with Stark Inc. records the bond issuance at par plus accrued interest as follows. So right here, you see that we issued the bonds now on March 1st. So we have two months, January and February, of, that, of what was accrued, right? So they were dated. They were dated January 1st. They were dated two months before they were issued, meaning we start accruing. This is, again, sort of a weird situation, but it can happen, and you might see it in questions. So we've been accruing interest for two months. Now, this is the issuance journal entry, which normally just has cash and bonds payable uh, and you know discounted premium, but now we see interest expense. Again, just because we've got 1.5 million, 6% interest rate for two months. Is a weird situation, but hey, what is this test? But if not, just a bunch of you know different situations you gotta get familiar with. On July 1st, year five, four months after the date of purchase, Stark Inc. pays the purchaser six months interest and makes the following entry. Well, here we go, right? This is a normal entry, right? Interest expense is accrued, right? Interest expense is accounted for in the income statement, and then we reduce our cash amount because we're paying it out. If, however, building company issued the 6% bonds at 102, its March 1st journal entry would be this entry. So um, here we are. This is at a premium rather than a discount. And one second, actually. So building company. No, we are Stark Company. We are Stark Company. That must have gotten confused. Let's make sure. Yeah, no, we are Stark Company still. Definitely not a little Avengers reference there. Totally fine to use that. Quite a fan myself. Um, in the March 1st entry, so this would be at a premium, right? So before, we have this interesting situation where they are issued at par, so there's no discount or premium, but this is, they are issued, uh, they're dated before the issuance date. Now, what if they are dated before the issuance date and there is a premium? Well, here's our journal entry, right? Cash is going to be pretty straightforward. We account for it with the Premium, bonds payable is the clean number. Interest expense is the uh, same amount. And then premium on bonds payable, well, it's 1.02. And that is going to be how we calculate our premium. Lots of fun, different situations. Always a good time here, right?